This is an old Dell T20 server, and there's not much that's remarkable about that. But this one has been given a new lease of life, because about a year ago I did some careful upgrades and I repurposed this old server as a network storage device, running TrueNAS. And here's the cool bit. In addition to helping the environment by reusing old hardware, you can take something like this and build a NAS that is more powerful than off-the-shelf systems for under £200 or $200. Now for those who are new to the topic, NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. Basically, a set of hard drives that you can access over a local network from any of your machines. And you can join multiple drives together to give you a larger storage space, and to create redundancy to protect your data in the event of a drive failure. I have been using an off-the-shelf Asus Store NAS, which I reviewed previously on the channel. And I've got to say, it's really good, but uh, its network connectivity is limited. And I wanted a new solution with the fastest 10 gigabit network speed. And when I was shopping around a year ago, prices were up around the £1,000 mark. Probably the same in dollars, about $1,000. Now they've come down a little in price since then, but these devices are still expensive. And what do you get for that £1,000 or $1,000 outlay? Well, usually a slow Celeron processor and about four gigabytes of RAM. Oh, and that price doesn't include any drives. So that got me thinking that I could build something better myself for that price point. And long story short, I ended up coming to the conclusion that buying an old used machine might be the way to go. Enter this Dell T20. We bought this particular machine some years ago for our web studio business. It was a cheap, simple server that did a sterling job hosting our source code repositories and version control system. It's got a basic Xeon quad-core CPU. I think it's an E3-1225 version 3, but I'll put the exact model up on the screen. And since our business didn't need the machine anymore, I got this particular one for free. But if you had to go and buy one used on eBay, you'll find there's plenty to choose from for not much money. I found an identical one for £65 on eBay UK, or $75 on eBay US. The T20 does need a few careful upgrades and additional components to make this setup work. But before we get to that, the first step, of course, is to clean out the years of dust and dirt that had accumulated inside. So a careful vacuum and a wipe down got it looking fresh again, and we're ready to consider the first upgrade, which is the RAM. Now we want the maximum for this motherboard of 32 gigabytes. The true NAS OS will use the RAM as a file cache, and this has a big impact on the speed of file copies. When you send files over the network, they'll go into the RAM first, and then flush from there into the storage drives. So if you're just copying small files, you can use the maximum speed of the network, regardless of the speed of the drives. So for the RAM, I found a company in the UK called Bargain Hardware, and they had some used RAM of the right type in stock. Uh, four of those sticks came to £72. I think the machine did originally have a single 8 gigabyte DIMM in there, so I could have just bought three sticks to save £18 there, uh, but I wanted them all to be matching. Installing the RAM, of course, is nice and easy. So on to the next challenge, which is upgrading the network speed. As standard, the T20 has a one gigabit network card, which I'm gonna use as a backup, but I want to have 10 gigabit network speed. eBay to the rescue. I found this used SolarFlare PCI Express card for 28 pounds. Looking at the specs, I could see it needs a PCIe 2.0 eight lane slot. And the T20 does have one of those. In fact, the slot I'm using is actually PCI Express generation three. There is another slot on the motherboard that appears to be an eight lane slot, but it's actually only a four lane slot supporting PCIe generation two. Four lanes of PCIe two would be enough for a 10 gigabit network card, but since the card that I've bought is designed as an eight lane card, I've decided to put it in that faster slot. So that was a very easy and cheap upgrade. The card arrived in good condition and was nice and easy to install. And it worked straight away with no drivers, so thumbs up there. I also picked up some Cat7 Ethernet cables on Amazon. Got a few different lengths and I've been really pleased with them. Now, of course, you do need additional network gear beyond just the NAS. You're gonna need a 10 gigabit switch, of course. I've got a Ubiquiti Unify four port switch, which wasn't cheap, but it has been absolutely rock solid. But I'm not including this in the price of the NAS because you need a 10 gig switch whether you buy your own or you buy an off the shelf NAS. And of course, you'll also want 10 gig support in your computer. But I do also have a 2.5 gigabit USB adapter to plug my MacBook into. It's not quite as fast, but it's not as slow as you might think. As you'll see, my spinning disks run at just under 400 megabytes per second, and that's equivalent to 3.2 gigabits. 
So you're losing about a quarter of the performance on longer file copies uh, and a bit more on smaller copies, but it's still quick enough. So if you're in a multi-user environment especially, 2.5 gigabit adapters will work fine with a spinning disk setup. And I'm going with spinning disks because they're cheaper and also because options for SSD in this chassis are limited. The T20 doesn't have any support for NVMe drives and we just use the fastest PCI slot for the network card, so there's probably not much point in adding more via a PCIe carrier board. So I've got four 8 terabyte Seagate Ironwolf drives in my USB-C enclosure, and I'm removing those and then installing them into this NAS. I've got some other older drives that will go back in that enclosure, which I'll continue to use for backups. Now when you buy an off-the-shelf NAS, you typically install your own drives, and that's why I'm not including drives in the price either. You might already have drives like me, but if you do need to go out and buy something like the Ironwolf 8 terabyte models I'm using, they're about £200 or $180 per drive. You might be able to find a better deal, and you might choose to go for smaller or even larger capacities. Just make sure that you're buying drives that are specifically designed for NAS use. My plan is to install these four 8 terabyte drives in a RAID 6 configuration, and that means that I'll only have half the total capacity, 16 terabytes. But the benefit is that any two of the drives can fail and I won't lose any data. Now, of course, I do have other backups, but this is our main storage array, so I don't want to have to spend time restoring data from backup if I don't have to. I'd rather just swap out a disk and let it rebuild the array in the background. With TrueNAS, you also need a separate drive for the operating system. And I also thought that I'd put another separate single drive in for temporary file storage. The T20 has four large drive bays, two at the bottom of the chassis and two at the top, and a space on the top carrier for a slim DVD drive, but if you don't use that, there's mounting points for two 2.5 inch SATA drives. So I'm going to do exactly that, I'm going to mount two 2.5 inch SATA SSDs in this position. One will be for the operating system and one is going to be devoted to that temporary file storage. And given that it's an SSD, it should run quickly. But Actually, in practice, I haven't used that temporary storage much at all in the past year. So our T20 can accommodate six drives in total, four large and two small, or if you wanted to create a near silent SSD NAS, you could mount six small SSDs and then have five of them in a RAID array. Nice. However, we only have four SATA ports and four power connectors in the T20. So I went looking for a PCI Express SATA card and I found this one on Amazon for £15. It is a bit of a compromise because it runs on a PCI Express 2.0 single lane slot, and that means total theoretical bandwidth of 500 megabytes per second. And if you do your math, you'll realise that's a little bit low for two 6 gigabit SATA ports. It's enough for one to run at close to full speed, once you've factored in overheads, but it's not enough for both to run simultaneously at full speed. I could have bought a more expensive card, and I could have put it in that empty four-lane slot that I mentioned earlier, so it is technically possible to give those SATA drives full bandwidth. I just figured that it didn't really matter to my use case, because it's unlikely that both the system drive and that temporary file drive will be getting hammered at the same time, and it's quick enough. The card works perfectly, I was able to get the boot drive working as well, whilst connected to this card. So I picked up some additional SATA cables on Amazon, a pack of three for just over £5, and I solved the power issue using some Y-splitter cables. Again, a pack of three from Amazon was just £7. And that's everything, so my total cost before adding drives came to £127, if I've done my math correctly. Uh, so even factoring in having to buy a T20, you can do a build just like this for £200 or $200 or even less. Just compare that to spending four or five times as much on an off-the-shelf unit. But you're getting a much more capable CPU, you're getting more RAM and the satisfaction of reusing older hardware, which is good for the environment. And it's hardware that is pretty low powered, so it's not going to be using much in the way of electricity, especially if you do what I do and shut it down when you're not using it. When it comes to volume, I find it's not that loud. The loudest noise coming from the case is the spinning discs. I think the T20 is a really nice chassis to work with. You can still find documentation for it on Dell's website, and I just love the schematics that are stuck to the door. Of course, there are lots of other options in older hardware that are well worth checking out, because you just don't need the latest and greatest CPU and motherboard for a NAS system like this. 
these older chips will still comfortably outperform the Celerons and embedded chips that you usually find in off-the-shelf NAS systems. When it comes to the OS, I've got to say that TrueNAS is excellent. It's got a really useful and easy to use web interface, and it was pretty easy to set up, and it's been completely reliable. Uh, but that's probably a deeper dive subject for another video. So finally, how does this uh, home-built NAS perform? Well, the answer is really well. Transfer speeds are excellent, as you can see. You can also see the effect of that RAM cache on the larger transfers. Just have a look at this screenshot. You can see the slight dip in performance as the cache fills up and then takes a moment to clear. And I'm guessing that as you transfer data, the RAM cache is immediately flushed out to the drives, whilst fresh data is still coming into the cache. Obviously, the data comes in faster than it can flush out to the spinning disk, so eventually you hit this bottleneck and it dips in performance for a moment. But in the meantime, the NAS continues to accept data at a decent speed, and that keeps overall speeds up. Hopefully that makes sense. I've thoroughly tested this machine in the year since doing the build, and I have to say, it's been brilliant. I'm really happy that we took this route, and I hope the experience has been useful to you in some way. Um, if you've got any questions, incidentally, please leave a comment. I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. But if you've done a build like this yourself, please also share your experience, because I'm by no means an expert with TrueNAS, and I've probably made a mistake somewhere. Now, as always, you can support the channel by using the Amazon links in the description. I've done a link to everything we featured. Uh, you could also give us a thumbs up, or a thumbs down, and please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you for spending a bit of time with me today. I'll see you again soon for some more Geekery.